There is no curse in elvish, entish, or the tongues of man for the absolute shit show of an article that I read about the rings of power. This has to be the worst take on anything related to Tolkien's work and any adaptation that has existed and especially what the rings of power is trying to do that I have read. It's like wanting it to be received badly. It's like it was written just for the sake of clicks and rage bait, nothing else. And the article that I'm going to cover today is this, The Collider. The Rings of Power Season 2 is fully leaning into enemies to lovers and I'm not mad about it by Kelsey Matson. We're gonna go through the article, I'm not gonna read the whole of it because it First of all, it's long and it's filled with absolute idiocy and unrelated stuff. But the main things we're gonna cover. The article starts with one of the many, one of the master strokes of the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power season one is the dynamic between Galadriel and Halbrand, or as we now know him, Sauron. Those names have become pop culture staples in the almost quarter century since director Peter Jackson's adaptation of J.R. Tolkien's epic The Lord of the Rings trilogy debuted. Galadriel played there by the radiant Kate Blanchett, who represents Syrian wisdom. Sauron nearly voiced by Alan Howard Codgen's images of greed, molten lava and feral rage. Setting these characters against one another feels like a mission statement from the Rings of Power showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. Existing fans know which character embodies good and which personifies evil. In a simple way, yeah. Putting him up against each other. However, Sauron was not against only Galadriel. She, he was against all of the all of them. Everyone had major roles in battling Sauron and being against him. Galadriel was actually not that huge of a part throughout the ages, unless you count the Third Age when she's pivotal to helping. I'm not saying she doesn't have a role, but there's a lot more going on and if JD Payne and Patrick McKenna actually had any sort of uh, creativity in them they would expand on that. Further down we get to the juicy part and intentionally or coincidentally it builds some of the most delicious enemies to lovers tension we've seen in a hot minute. Rings of Power's first season deploys the tropes expected of a high fantasy world and of two enemies building an unexpected connection with the bonus of our distraught heroine discovering she's been bamboozled by her sworn nemesis, who then offers to make her his dark queen. It's a cliché banquet executed with immersive flares sold through Clark and Vickers' chemistry, and a feast to which fans responded if season 2's marketing is anything to go by. Granted, a legitimate Galadriel and Sauron romance is highly unlikely, but one glance at season 2's promotional photo shoots trailers and social media posts shows that Prime Video is leaning into the appeal of Galadriel and Sauron, not Galadriel versus Sauron. I say let them cook. I cannot, alright? I simply cannot. I have said in the past a lot of times, if you want to have your own version of things, write a fan story, even if it's an expensive one. Don't try to post this as any sort of canon and the article clearly actually states it granted the legitimate Galadriel and Sauron romance is highly unlikely yeah because they're not legitimate they don't have anything to do with what we know and what is canon in the Tolkien verse but they're still appealing to some sort of romance between Sauron and Galadriel, they're trying to make it work when it's not something that should be working in the first place. Further down the article we get this. Galadriel isn't fighting to protect Middle-earth just because her integrity compels her to. In season 1 she's driven by her relentless need to avenge Sauron's murder of her brother. A millennium spent nursing her grief has slid her into moral grayness. Even though this deviates from Tolkien's canon, it immediately transforms the fight for Middle-earth's freedom from generic fantasy into a point of personal contention. A necessary move to ensure that the Galadriel Sauron conflict carries a keener by you just called Tolkien's work generic fantasy you you literally called one of the greatest fantasy authors of all time an 
multi-generational spanning fan base, a bestseller on every level, a bestseller on every movie level with proper adaptations, you called that thing generic fantasy. Are you perhaps without a brain cell? Are you perhaps an orange cat? This baffles me. How can something like this be grinded? You're diminishing someone who is way above you in every level of writing, in every level of comprehension. And to, to, to call someone like, to call Tolkien's work generic fantasy is so insulting to the level that I think there should be measures against this. You, you cannot just call yourself a fan because I've seen her profile, the author's profile, and she paints herself as a fantasy nerd, a fan of Lord of the Rings and other, and other franchise. And she writes that this is generic. The moment you wrote those words into your article, you have lost any speck of credibility that you might might have had. The article continues to romance her and how he cling, cling to her loneliness, how he bamboozled her, as the author says. And I'm asking where is Celeborn in all of this? He is nowhere to be found. He's just a fling. He is not anyone important in this universe. And then we go to this. Welcome to the comforting aesthetics of an enemies to lovers opening act. Every moment on the Haladriel, yeah, we we now have the the name Haladriel. Journey is catnip to romance fans. It's not a romance story. It shouldn't be a romance story. It shouldn't be focused on this. Are you an idiot? Are you perhaps an absolute first grade triple a idiot tell me i want to know my god as a lover of romance and talking wanting galadriel and sauron to angrily kiss wasn't on my bingo card the combination is intoxicatingly potent this is going to lead to too many uncomfortable evenings for a lot of girl fans probably or man fans, I don't know, to each their own. Not even Argon's Anduril sword could slice through their tension. Something season 2 is all but guaranteed to dial up to 11. Their pseudo friendship's baggage is a breeding ground for drama. After all, enemies to lovers can't exist without the paradoxical clash between vicious loathing and softer represented yearning. Galadio and Sauron's miasma of ambiguity sends our feet kicking, and since the second season's promotional campaign has dived headfirst into Haladriel supremacy, they must agree. So, you're basically excited that they're turning something such as talking lore into a cheap 2.99 at the dollar store romance novel by an author nobody knows that's what you're excited about you're excited that they're absolutely destroying the lore and they're trying to replace official lore with this by saying that yeah we're going to be more authentic they actually promised that for season two if you don't remember that they're going to lean more into uh being lore accurate and you are excited for this and you're excited that this is going to be what they're focusing about and we know that there's that's what they're focusing about because it's in the trailers you have war and love and that's it and the love is absolutely twisted because who do you think is going to watch this are you still perhaps on the thought process that you're gonna bring new fans probably twilight fans or 50 shades of gray fans to this universe and you don't even care that you're alienating every single actual talking fan out there that has grew up with the books with the movies with the with all the adaptations even some of us with the older adaptations and you think that this is something that will keep them and it will bring you new fans as well that want cheap romance flicks is that your goal is that the goal of the show is that what you're excited about this is an absolute idiocy of the highest order i know what's gonna happen in with season two nobody's gonna watch it nobody's gonna sign up for prime just to watch this nobody's going to care and the people who care will just bash it into oblivion because i and it will be deservingly so because this is not how you do things this is not 
how you respect someone. Calling Tolkien a generic fantasy is the opposite. And you just insulted one of the greatest authors and greatest makers of all time. And I hope you're happy because you will get your season 2. And it will have everything that was written in the article. Yes, I'm sure of it. And I just can't wait to see how much viewership and how the ratings are going to be. I just can't wait at this point. We're only a few days away and this is going to be an epic flop. I can bet anything you want. And this article has left me confused about existence. This is exactly what it is. I, I'm currently not even capable of being angry at this because i'm just numb from all the absolute bullshit that has been spilled regarding this show absolute there is nothing worth protecting with this franchise there is nothing worth standing up behind standing behind it's just a absolute train wreck from the start and it's going and the train is very big very long and it keeps on crashing and crashing and crashing without any signs of stopping anyways this is all i have for this video today uh tell me what you think about this article tell me what you think about the show are you gonna watch it are you gonna just ignore it tell me your thoughts in the comments below press the like and subscribe button and if you want to follow me on my socials they're in down in the description below i also have a patreon where i raise money for the homeless animals and animals in shelters i've been held this has been truly disgusting and i can see i'll see you in the next video cheers and stay fresh